A record number of voters went to the polls during the midterm election to determine the outcome of a number of races. We'll recap the results affecting Orion area residents. The community came together to honor those who served in the military with a luncheon and a ceremony on Veterans Day. The Lake Orion Lions Charity Dinner and Raffle returned after a two-year hiatus, which helps them provide Christmas meals and toys to families in need. And amateur filmmakers had their short films projected on the silver screen during ONTV's Wildwood Film Festival. Coming up, we'll meet the winners. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. I'll have those stories and more on this edition of ONTV News. On Tuesday, November 8th, voters went to the polls to determine the outcome of several races during the midterm election, including Michigan Governor, Lake Orion Village Council, Board of Education, and several proposals. Statewide, approximately 4.5 million of Michigan's 8.2 million registered voters participated in the election, including 1.8 million absentee ballots cast. State officials announced it was Michigan's highest turnout ever in a midterm election. In Orion Township, voter turnout was high, with 70% of registered voters casting ballots in some precincts. Results started trickling in soon after the polls closed at 8 p.m. In the race for governor, incumbent Gretchen Whitmer held off challenger Tudor Dixon with 54.47% of the votes. Democrat Whitmer received 2,422,624 votes to Republican Dixon's 1,954,311 to earn another four-year term. Democrats also took control of Michigan's House and Senate for the first time in nearly 40 years. In the race for Secretary of State, Democratic incumbent Jocelyn Benson defeated Republican challenger Christina Caramo, 2,459,865 votes to 1,846,448. 55.86% of the vote earned Benson another four-year term. Attorney General Dana Nessel earned another four-year term after defeating Republican challenger Matthew DiPerno with 53.15% of the votes to DiPerno's 44.55%. Republican Lisa McLean defeated Brian Jay in the race to serve Michigan's 9th District in Congress, which includes Lake Orion on the newly redrawn district map. McLean earns a two-year term with 63.90% of the votes. Republican Donnie Still edged out Democrat Shadia Martini by a narrow margin in the race to represent the 54th District in the state legislature. Former Orion Township Treasurer Still received 22,959 votes to Martini's 21,913 to earn a two-year term. Republican Mike Gingell defeated Democratic challenger Sarah Pounds in the race to represent the 6th District on the Oakland County Board of Commissioners. Gengel was first elected in November of 2006 and will continue to represent Lake Orion on the Oakland County Board. Lake Orion voters were asked to fill four vacancies on the Village Council. Newcomer Nancy Moshier received the most votes with 639. Incumbent Teresa Rutt received 544 votes. Carl Sarowski received 502 votes. And current President Ken Van Portfleet received 496 votes. Incumbents Douglas Hobbs and Bradley Matheson were not re-elected. Five candidates competed to fill three vacancies on the Lake Orion Board of Education. Receiving the most votes was newcomer Heather Sanawi with 9,619. Incumbents Stephen Dracos and Jake Singer were re-elected. Board President Jim Weedman, whose term ends in December, chose not to run for re-election. Voters in Orion Township chose to renew the Parks and Recreation Millage that went into effect in 2018. The renewal passed with 11,686 yes votes to 7,555 no votes. Uh, we're all just extremely grateful to the community support and, um, you know, the overwhelming support over the past few years on where Orion Township Parks and Rec has gone and um, kind of making sure that we took care of all our master plan needs that the community wanted. So also I wanted to say, um, you know, with the renewal of the millage we have next year, we're going out for our five-year master plan. And so we want to encourage everyone to get out. We'll have community surveys. We'll have public forums. We'll have events where you can come in and really tell us what you want us to do with those dollars over the next five years. 
All three Michigan proposals passed focusing on term limits, voting rights, and abortion rights. For statewide election results, you can visit michigan.gov slash elections. And for local results, you can visit oakgov.com. It's generally accepted that World War I came to an end on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918. Armistice Day was created in 1921 to celebrate the historical event. In 1954, Congress passed a bill that President Eisenhower signed proclaiming November 11th as Veterans Day. On the afternoon of Friday, November 11th, veterans and their guests were invited to attend a Veterans Day luncheon at the Orion Center. Attendees received a welcome back and enjoyed a nice meal courtesy of Italia Gardens. There was entertainment and sponsors offered raffle prizes. Huge thank you to all of our sponsors. Um, four of them are here today, Lords, Senior Living, Seniors Helping Seniors, Pomeroy Living in Orion, and United Healthcare. So, and then uh, we had multiple donate as well. So Allison, L Edible Art, Tim Hortons, Italia Gardens, Hospice Care of Michigan um, were our main ones, so. And it's just a big thank you to, to their service, the family members who support them. It's just a, a good day to celebrate Veterans Day and their service. The first Veterans Day luncheon took place in 2019, but when the pandemic hit in 2020, box lunches were offered to go. Things returned to normal in 2021, and this year, 20 veterans and their guests attended the luncheon. I mean, this was something I started when I started here um, back in 2018, and it was just something that I felt like we were missing. We have a, a lot of veterans here at the Orion Center, and um, it, it's more of an intimate feel. They're not going to a restaurant. They get to sit down, be with other members of the Orion Center, and most of them are friends already, so it's just something really comfortable for them. They don't have to get out of their shell and go out somewhere where they might not feel comfortable. So it means a lot to me to be able to put this on. I enjoy it every year. and. Everyone's so thankful and um, it's just a great event. Later that evening, members of the community returned to the Orion Center for a ceremony that honored our nation's veterans. U.S. Navy veteran Lee Smith welcomed those in attendance. Following the Pledge of Allegiance and the National Anthem, Smith offered some opening remarks. However, I have noticed more and more that those who did not serve are reaching out, are looking to us for what we stand for. And whether you call it a brotherhood, a sisterhood, a fraternity, or simply family, they're starting to notice more and more that us as veterans weren't living in the worlds where there were so many silos and so many divisions. When you were serving, you were serving with your brothers and sisters in arms, the person left to you, the person to the right to you, and it didn't matter what their religion was. It didn't matter what their color was, right? right? You served alongside your brothers and sisters. And this is something that we need to translate to those of us around, to those around us and in our community more and more. So that is my Veterans Day challenge to use to make every day a Veterans Day a Veterans Day that you help others understand. Simply being good Americans. The keynote speaker was retired Brigadier General Duck Slocum of the U.S. Air Force. Country. So we have people that are heroes that go out and do amazing things, but everybody is a hero that serves our country, sets time aside, and puts their time, talents, and treasures towards defending our freedoms. So for all of you, thank you so much for what you do. This is our day to celebrate. Uh, and what a great time it is to be able to come to organizations like this to make sure that we're passing the torch to the new generation as we go forward. So I appreciate the time to be able to spend with you today. Thank you for your service. Thank you for our freedoms. And God bless you and God bless the United States of America. State Chaplain Jim Mouse of VFW Post 334 thank brought the ceremony to a close with a benediction followed by a gun salute and the playing of taps. Lake Orion is home to one of the most beautiful veterans memorials in the state, if not the country. Since its groundbreaking ceremony on Memorial Day 1996, the memorial has grown with several new attractions added over the past 25 years. On Friday, October 28th, a small gathering took place at the Orion Veterans Memorial 
on Lapeer Road. In addition to all the monuments and statues that have been added over the past several decades, seven new flagpoles were erected on the site. We didn't think it was complete without a flag for each branch of service. Like I say, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, Coast Guard, Merchant Marine, and now the Space Force, all seven. How were these flags funded? Who helped make it possible? Donations from many sources and the selling of bricks, which we have uh, uh, donations from the bricks too and uh, so forth. Visitors were also encouraged to discover two new plaques that were installed near the Victory Garden that commemorate the efforts of women in the military and Rosie the Riveter, who represents the women who worked in factories and shipyards during World War II. I think our country has got forgotten women in World War II, either that or they never knew in the very beginning because nobody has ever publicized women in the service in World War II. And even today, we've got a couple women in our VFW posts. Uh, both were officers that joined our post, and they're just regular people like they enlisted, you know. But women thought that they knew how important they were in World War II, but nobody ever recognized them. And I think, along with our Victory Garden, this goes, it kind of completes the story. My mother went to work in the plant in 1943, and she did stay the whole 35 years and retired. But after the war, the men got discharged, and they come home and wanted their jobs back. Women weren't going to give them up. And uh, so that was the beginning of women doing outside work outside the home, uh, was World War II. Over the years, the Orion Veterans Memorial has become a gathering place for the community, hosting ceremonies on Memorial Day and Patriots Day, and inviting residents to have coffee with a veteran. For more information, visit orionveteransmemorial.com. Throughout the year, the Lake Orion Lions Club hosts numerous fundraisers that allow them to continue their charitable efforts in the community. Recently, the Lions Club hosted a fundraiser that makes sure many local families and seniors have a Merry Christmas. On the evening of Saturday, November 5th, Malasha's Palace was the site of the Lions Club, a Christmas for Everyone charity dinner and auction. After a two-year hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic, attendees seemed excited to be back to support the fundraiser. It's almost like falling off a bike, you always remember. Uh, just trying to get back into the flow of everything. It's been way too long, um, but uh, I think by the, based on what the crowd we have this year, it's gonna be a fantastic night. And I really hope everybody enjoys themselves and have, just has a great time. Attendees enjoyed a buffet dinner courtesy of Metamora Golf and Country Club's Fairway Catering. There was a live auction, wine pool, cookie sales, and a silent auction was replaced by a bucket raffle with tables of prizes donated by local businesses and organizations. Well, we got to start off with the Malash family, of course. Can't, this is not possible at all without them. Uh, Liberty Way, um, Converting Alternatives, uh, Orient Assisted Living, those are our big sponsors. There's just so many other uh, companies out here, businesses that have helped us out with donations that just so many to list. This event raises funds for the local Lions Club's Christmas Basket Program, which helps families in need with two weeks of food plus toys for the kids. Volunteers will gather at the Cirque building on December 16th to organize the food and toy donations, then deliver them to families on Saturday, December 17th. All of the funding that we raise tonight will go 100% to that. Um, last couple years, thankfully, we've been able to kind of live off of our, of our reserves that we've had. So this is a real welcome uh, boost to our, to our finances. If you missed the event, it's not too late to donate. You can contact the Lake Orion Lions through their Facebook page. They will also be selling Goodfellas newspapers the weekend of Thanksgiving and the first weekend in December. And finally, ONTV's mission is to empower members of the community to create, communicate, and connect through television and video production. Each year, ONTV hosts a film challenge and film festival to encourage local producers to be creative. ONTV's Joe Johnson caught up with the winners of this year's film festival. 
on the evening of Wednesday, October 26th, aspiring filmmakers, family, and friends arrived at the GQT Oxford 7 Theater for ONTV's annual Wildwood Film Festival. Now in its ninth year, eight short films were submitted and scrutinized by a panel of judges. All of the submissions were shown on the big screen, and cash prizes were handed out for first, second, and third place finishers. The event also acted as a fundraiser for the North Oakland Community Coalition. Uh, this year was a little down on the number of submissions, but we have to say the quality of the submissions this year really took a leap forward, uh, especially from the high school students at Lake Morian High School. They really, really showed their talent and their technical skills, and uh, one even took an award home. So we're really pleased with the turnout. Uh, again, ONTV always partners with a charity on events like this, and uh, North Oakland Community Coalition, o NOCC, is our charity uh, this year, so we're glad to support, uh, support them as well. Things kicked off on Thursday, October 20th, when participating teams were assigned a prop, a location, and a random line of dialogue. The filmmakers then had approximately five days to plan, shoot, and edit a short film. On October 25th, a panel of judges critiqued each film on things like audio, cinematography, story, and acting. After all the films were shown at the theater, ONTV executive director Ian Locke announced the winners. Coming in third place was Sweet Nothings, produced by Pecan Studios. Audrey, honey, what is going on? Honey isn't in the recipe, I'm afraid. One cup of consideration, one gallon of faith and trust in each other, Three pounds of love and affection carefully distributed, and then finally, a dash of contentment. I guess that's part of the recipe he missed. I have a undying passion for filmmaking and for working with people like Nikki and, and Storm, and I can't get enough of it. They say playing the villain is more fun than playing the hero, is it? It is very true. This is my first time playing a villain, and I had a ton of fun with it. Um, it was really fun. Um, I actually worked with Emma. We just did a play together for um, uh, Pit and Balcony in Saginaw. Um, so it was really fun working with her again. It was kind of also fun, I guess, being killed on <laughs> camera. <laughs> um, so. Second place was awarded to Curse of the Pizza Box by Team Triumvirate. What are you, some sort of Curse of the Pizza Box? One might say. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? I'm going to make you take over this town. Um, Erm, you're just a voice in my head. You can't do anything. Well, um, uh, you better listen to me. Here's what you're going to do. Whatever you're going to ask, the answer is no. Um, well, I, I like making films. It's kind of a different outlet of creation for us. Um, and it's, it's kind of a fun challenge of the short time period they give you to create something. So, I enjoy it. Now you finish in the top three, does that motivate you to aim higher next year? Oh yeah, first place next year, what do you think? <laughs> Absolutely, first place, first we're, place we're next shooting year. for the stars. Place, easily. <laughs> All right. And the winner of the 2022 Wildwood Film Festival was Overtime, produced by Calvin Green and Vincent Martacci of Cine Films. <laughs> Hey, Jake, you got those reports for me? I just really, like you said, it's amazing seeing our films on a screen. It's really great being able to participate in an event like this, too. Like you say, like not a lot of people have the opportunity to do this. It's not a super accessible thing. We just did the 48-hour film festival this year, and, you know, it's not as accessible as something like this. So it's really cool being able to see all these different films from all these different community members that you wouldn't expect to be in a film. Like I, my neighbors across the street last year, they did a one, and, oh, my gosh, I love that. I love that. I, I um... I met Vinny uh, over a decade ago, and we actually met through a, a filmmaking class kind of thing, and then uh, we started coming to ONTV 10 Once years ago, ago taking the, the classes, uh, getting involved, and, and uh, we've never left. Even though I, don't, I, like, I travel so much, I make sure I'm here, home, spending time with him and making films, because that's what we love to do, and that's what it's really about. 
All of the submissions are currently airing on local cable TV and can be viewed on demand on ON TV's YouTube channel. Visit OrionONTV.org for more information. In Oxford, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV News. Thanks, Joe, and congratulations to this year's winners. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. Thanks for watching.